A West Shore home now. Local Sky 3, bringing you the big local news from unique views. Okay, if you were watching from your home this morning and on your to-do list was to clean the upstairs closet or get some things sorted out to make your life a little bit less cluttered, just don't do it right now and watch us instead because we're so happy to have Matt Paxton on the show. So good to see you. Welcome to town. Many people are looking at you going, I know him, I know him. So you might know him from Hoarders. Yep. You'll probably know him from Legacy List on PBS Now. Yep. But really, you just want to say you're a dad. I'm a uh, with dad a bunch of, of kids. I got seven kids. I got a lot of stuff. And I've been helping people clean out their closets and attics for over 25 years. Okay, first of all, yeah. this is the part that's going to make you say, what? It can't be. You have seven children. Yes. And how big is your house? We have a 2,400 square foot house. So the uh, question is, how do you do it? Well, we're minimalists and we're really very strict on, you know, every space uh, needs to be intentional. And so we make sure that if they're, if they're going to have an item, they're going to use it. So we, we don't have a lot of clothes, and I think that's the hard thing for most people. Oh. We have no closets in our house. We designed it purposefully that way. Because if you don't have a lot of stuff, you don't need anywhere to store it. I'm not telling everybody here <laughs> to get rid of your closets. It works for us. Um, what I would say is we have found happiness and joy in less. And so I try to take that to other people in a more manageable way in their home. Okay, that's a very powerful mm. phrase. So I was talking to a very good friend of mine yeah. a couple of nights ago, and our topic was kitchen cabinets. Yes. And both of us said if we could ever design our own kitchens, we would not put any kitchen cabinets in there because they just collect a bunch of stuff. Yeah, we have open, we have open yes. uh, shelves. We have 10 cups. We have nine people. We have 10 cups. We have 10 plates. We wash every oh, night. Oh, you're Henry David yeah. Thoreau. Yeah. Well, you only, look, you really, you came in with nothing, you leave with nothing. Yeah. I mean, we really do find, it, and I've, look, being on Hoarders, being all these shows that I've done, I get to study people and their stuff. And, and the one thing it all has in common is we're looking for happiness and self-worth mm -hmm. in our stuff. And that's actually an empty journey, right? The happiness comes from family and people and time. And the reason we hold on to stuff is because that stuff represents those people in time. Right. So when I come to town and I teach people, I say, hey, look, let's find out where that real joy is, where that real happiness is, mm -hmm. and let's tell the stories. Because usually it's about someone that's passed away. It's about someone that right. we remember. Or a memory. A memory. Mm -hmm. And so I say, hey, man, you can still tell those stories, and then you can get rid of the stuff. Okay, so you and I, he and I have been mm -hmm. chatting a bit off camera, each of us sharing some, some facts mm -hmm. of our own, of things that we mm -hmm no longer have yep. but the story lives Forever. and the story lives even for members of the family who were not even there to Correct. witness the story yes so your advice is for people with that crammed up mm -hmm. call closet before you go through the hall closet first think about what's in your house that you love the most yeah so my number one tip is called a legacy list that's also the name of my show on pbs uh, created legacy list is the terse Sorry. It's the first five or six items in your house that tell your family story. And I want you to write out the story. And then here's the key. you got to share the story. you got to find someone in your house to tell it. Um, one thing I'm proud of, we have a big blended family now. And my young stepchildren are now hearing stories about my grandmother and my great-grandmother. And we're cooking their recipes around the holidays now. And they ask me stories about my dad and my grandfather and my step. They ask me all these stories about all these people mm -hmm. because we're using a cookbook my, my grandmother made 50 years ago. All right, so you have the cookbook. Yes. It still is in your possession. It's in my possession. But as they grow and enter mm -hmm. their own lives, the memories of using that cookbook yep. will live. And I tell the stories, right? We're cooking the... the the recipe and I say, oh my gosh, one time my grandfather and I, we were fishing and a bear started chasing us. And this is actually a funny story. My grandfather was like, we were freaking out. We're driving down an old country road and my brother and I are in the back of the pickup and there were brown bears chasing us. And I think about my grandfather now freaking out. Right. Like, oh my God, a bear. And he slams the brakes. We jump in, we drive away. <laughs> and my kids now are like, tell the bear story. Tell the fishing with the bear story. And they can tell the story. Right. And they heard that story when we were cooking fish from my grandma's recipe. Right. Right. They never met those men. Those men have been dead for 50 years. Right. But they can tell that story for me because I've shared it so many times. Okay, so well, before I go yeah. on, is there another tip you want to share? Yeah, you, well, create the legacy list and also start small. So many of us, we look at a house and we think, you know, you, you've got a 4,000 square foot home and you've lived in it 30 or 40 years. And I remind them, it took you 40 years to fill it. You're not going to clean it in a three-day weekend, mm -hmm. right? So I really, you have to set expectations very small. I want you to clean like an hour a night every other night right. for the first couple of weeks because the hardest part about downsizing is not quitting. It's just like working out, mm. right? If you, if, you, if you try to run a marathon right away, you're gonna quit. Mm -hmm. It's not gonna happen. If you try to clean your entire house right away, you're gonna quit or right. you're gonna get frustrated with a loved one. Um, I actually encourage, also my third one is kind of 
find the right partner to clean with. It's not always your spouse. It's not always oh, your adult child. One. It might be a friend because you want to share the stories. If my wife had to hear these stories again, <laughs> she would lose it. So I don't clean with my wife, but when I clean with my kids. Okay, I'll play psychologist mm. with you for a minute too. Yeah. So we do, I think we do tend to be a nation of collectors. Yes, we're uh, Americans, man, we buy. Our economy is built on that, right. absolutely. So then though, you talked about kind of how you're happier when, uh, what was the phrase you used earlier? More with less. More with less, okay, yeah. I'll go with that one. Yeah. Um, but you have things that mean a lot to you. If you have too many things, you can't use them. Correct, and that's where donation comes in. That's why I'm here. Okay, with let's Goodwill. talk about Goodwill. Yeah. Well, Good segue. So that's why I work with Goodwill, right? Um, for me, donation is a really powerful tool to empty your house because if you start to focus on what the item is financially worth, you're never going to be happy. I mean, I've got 20 years of experience to explain that you will never be happy with what you sell an item for, but you will always be happy with the joy that it brings you when you give it to someone mm -hmm. that needs more, mm -hmm. right? And I remind everybody, like, there is always someone that needs that eighth pair of jeans more than you do. Right. Do we really need eight pair of jeans? No. No. I, I, you know, I, got a, I found a pair of hammer pants in my closet the other day <laughs> when I was moving, right? And they were size 28. I'm a solid 36 now, right? <laughs> and there's nothing worse than tight hammer pants, right? Right, right? Can I donate that? Yes, I can donate that. And by the way, there's someone in the world that's like, these are awesome. This is exactly right. what I need. Right. So I've really gotten focused on donation. That is a way to bring joy to you and to another party. You probably see this because yeah. you have a house full of seven mm -hmm. kids. Um, I see this too in, in my life. Young people today are Love actually it. seeking out mm -hmm. uh, intentional shopping like you have at Goodwill. Oh yeah. Because it is a, it's a environmentally friendly way to shop. Mm -hmm. They like the purpose so of it. So my stepdaughter will go with me to Goodwill and I, we keep a box in the back of each of our trunks because I am getting a little older and I don't want to pick that box up that's on the garage floor. Yeah. If you leave it on the garage floor, you throw the stuff on it, the box overflows. So I keep the box in my trunk and we have an item every time one of the kids outgrows something. I ask the other kids, do they want it? They never do. I put it in the Goodwill <laughs> box and then when it's full, I drive by Goodwill, pop the trunk, guy comes out and takes it for me. Right. right? But now my daughter will come with me because she's like, well, I'm just gonna, if I'm gonna donate an item, I'm gonna go in and look mm. and see oh, if right, there's something right. I like. Right. And they prefer, honestly, the younger generation prefers, mm -hmm. they find value in uh, the older clothes, but here's the best part. They really find value in our closets, right? So many, you and me. Yeah. Like, it's amazing to me, so many of my clients think, well, my grandkids don't want my stuff. Nobody wants my stuff. They don't want the dining room. But I guarantee mm -hmm. you, if you let them into your closet, they're going to find a fur coat they love. They're going to yeah. find some jewelry they want. They're going to find some vintage shoes. Right. But it, but yeah. it all goes back to the memories of it. The memories and the stories. Because it's going to be their grandmother's fur coat yep. or the scarf that smells like their grandmother, yeah. whatever but it yes. is. Yes. So it's your grandma's fur coat even more when they know that you wore that fur coat on the first date with your grandfather and they know the whole story. Ooh. Now that, that story makes that item even more important. So with your book that you've written, because you mm -hmm. were signing that when you were yeah. in Chattanooga, uh, keep the memories, lose the stuff. Does that guide people through not only the practical how, but the emotional All part? Because you have to have permission to let that stuff yep. go. That's You hard. have to give yourself permission. So my book, Keep the Memories, Look, Lose the Stuff, it'll actually walk you through the physical how to actually downsize. It also walks you through that emotional journey of how to share your stories, how to talk to your family members, mm -hmm. how to ask them if they want it, how to ask them if, if they don't want it. Believe it or not, saying no is a very challenging thing for a lot of people over 55. Yeah. Um, we, we really go into all of the feelings, even guilt. I can't tell you how many families uh, hold on to stuff from people that passed away 40 oh, years sure. ago. Oh, right? sure. Because you don't want to upset someone that died 40 years ago. And you know what? Yeah. Maybe, do you give yourself permission to say you don't have to do it quickly? I, everyone's timeline is different. Everyone's journey is different. What I want you to do is take the time to tell those stories. And if you do that, your house will slowly, slowly get emptier. The more stories you tell, the more you'll find that you want to donate, not keep. And then all of a sudden, you're happier, you've told more stories, and your house is emptier. So he's not here to sell anything, mm -hmm. but maybe if you want to purchase one thing, mm -hmm. purchase the Keep the Memories, Lose the Stuff. You, wanna, you can check out my book, Keep the Memories, Lose the Stuff, and if you're if you're really enjoying the downsizing, go donate something at Goodwill. At Goodwill, and then you can watch his show, Legacy List, on PBS. Yeah. I'm going to start watching. Thank you, Matt. Show. Thank you so much. Show me how you feel. It's been a while. Go ahead and smile. Go ahead and smile.
What's the difference between iEar Optical and other optical places? 